Hey everybody, Jack Bishop here. I wanted to do a video today about getting paid and how much you can make and how little you can make doing the same job and how easy it is to screw yourself out of money even if it's not your fault, let's say, or maybe it is your fault. But I got two examples. The information I got comes from Sinister, Mr. Sinister the Trucker. I'll put a link to the video that I got this information from so you can go check it out. And Jay the Trucker, I'll link to that video also so you can see what I'm talking about in their own words. But I'm, I'm using theirs as an example of what's going on. Anyway, Sinister put out a pay information per mile, the pay for probation. He said it was 400 a week for the first four to six weeks while you're on the truck with your trainer. And then when you get off of that, you go into a square program, and it works off of a sliding scale. So does the top pay per mile go on a sliding scale. And this comes from Sinister. You can go down, like I said, and check it out in the video in full detail. But briefly, it was... 0 to 242, 201, 339, 301 to 500 miles, 35, that was all miles. Let me start again. 0 to 200 miles is 42 cents a mile, 201 to 339, 301 to 535, 501 plus 33 cents per mile. And he gave an example um, at the lower pay was or the, the square pay the, the, like the trainer pay a particular load he was on was off 749 miles and loaded and 39 deadhead miles which come up to an, if, if he was on the square pay would have been, which would have been 33 cents per mile for 501 miles, which he did 788, everything over 501 miles is 33 cents a mile, he would have made $260.04 for that run. Okay, if he's off the Squire program or onto 30,000 miles and above, that's the qualification of the Squire program, the same breakdown goes 47 cent, 44 cent, 40 cent, and 38. So the same load after your 30,000 miles is $299.44. So there's a $39 difference in the pay just by completing your square program, your training, or your um, probation pay, I guess I would call it maybe. Just kind of let everybody know in your company, your dispatcher, how you run and, and how your performance is. Now, that sounds pretty good, $300 for a 700 mile trip, pretty good, take you a couple of days to do that. But then I went over to Jada Trucker, just for an example, I'm not picking on her because this happens a lot in trucking and I want everybody that's new to trucking to understand that it's, it's not all raking in cash and load after load after load after load, things happen that really interrupt your money. So Jay, the trucker, she goes down, picks up a load from Gaffney, South Carolina, carries it down to St. Pete, I think she said. But I, I checked it out, it was 579, no, it was two, yeah, her load was 579 miles. It should have taken her eight to nine hours to do. So that's a one day trip. If she was on the Squire program, off of the Squire program, it would have been $220.02, which would be a good load for one day pay. Now she gave out some times, and like I said, you can go and watch the video and, and check out the times. She wasn't doing the video complaining, but I, I saw things in the video, and I listened to what she was saying. She was supposed to get the load off at 1 o'clock this particular day. So she gets there at, she said, 115 or 120. So she was late. I don't think it was her fault though, but she was late, and whether it was her fault or not, if it's if it's your fault, 
if you're screwing around in a truck stop somewhere, not pushing the load, or if it's somebody else's fault, it's still the same thing. It's going to cost you money. So she had to reschedule. So she's talking about this. She's, she's back on the yard somewhere, I think, in that uh, St. Pete area. And she's trying to get the dispatcher to reschedule the load for the next morning at 7 a.m. And then she kind of flashes her watch, and it was 7.04 at this particular time. So the way I figure, she made $220 and two cents. Should have been an eight or nine hour run and offload and everything, but she got pushed back. So she's already seven hours past her delivery time, still not getting paid. Maybe she gets some detention pay for being late, but I, I don't know how that works if you're late or if, I don't know how it works, the detention pay, but I'm just showing you how just a little screwing around, 20 minutes, cost seven hours here and she said that the new time would be like 7 a.m. but she's got to get up at 5 a.m. to get through the Orlando traffic because it's so busy so there's two more hours that's going to be off of her time clock her um, 11 hour driving day so she starts at 5 gets over there to get unloaded and she gets unloaded at 7 Ever how long that takes, let's just say how long it takes 30 minutes, which is already two and a half hours into her day for the next day. She's already blew this day completely off. Now she's into another driving day. Then if she has to go another hour or two, or maybe maybe only 30 minutes to another load, has to get loaded there two hours. Now you're talking about almost five, six hours into another day of driving time. So you can try to make you know, what time you can there, you know, ever how they do it now. You really have to plan your trips around, you know, the loads and make sure, always make sure you get your loads on time, I guess is the, my championship belt fell. What does that mean? Always plan your loads and get your loads there on time. Get your loads there early if you can. Like a little guy trucker was talking earlier, if they schedule a load for say Monday morning you pick up a load and they schedule it for Wednesday afternoon at 4.30 and you can get there Tuesday afternoon at 4.30 why not see if you can get the load switch back a day get it off a day earlier see if they'll reschedule the unload that's where you, you make your money but if you just take the the Wednesday delivery time at 4.30 and you just don't suggest anything you drive there you're a day early you're screwing around the truck stop or whatever you're doing and then you get there and you get unloaded you know you're constantly losing time every day and just you know just a little hint I guess to keep it tight as you can when you're out there working try to work you know don't, don't be goofing off at a truck stop like I've seen so many guys do before there was a couple of Guys, one day they were sitting in the truck stop playing video games, and I went in and fueled up and left. And it wasn't long here these guys come, they're bawling Jack down the highway trying to get back where they were supposed to be, and they're complaining on the radio, everybody's in their way and everything, and they they wouldn't be if they went ahead and, and did their business and left. But you know, it was just it was just a mess, you know, for, for them and a battle. But you know. Do your loads as quick as you can. Don't drive all your hours out. I've heard a lot of drivers now say they only drive eight hours a day. That way you never run out of hours and you can always, you don't have to do that forced 34 hour reset. You can drive eight hours a day and plan your trip and all that. You know how to do all that stuff. But anyway, sorry for the long video, but that's it for this week. Tag Bishop signing out. <laughs>